This is the distorted mirror. On this side it's called the concave. If I move back, I will get wider and wider until eventually, at this point, I will eventually go upside down. Let's go to Jerry, on, let's talk to Jerry on the other side. Well, this is the convex side of the mirror and it's got this huge bench in it which causes you to get smaller as you put the goat gradually move back. So as you can see on the mirror, I am a lot smaller than I would usually be if I was seen in a normal mirror. The reason is, this is because the, the dent inside the mirror coming towards me makes me look smaller when I come back. Okay, this is a series of wooden hammers to create frequency and amplitude to create sound. sound may be going into a wave and when, and when the wave hits a not an object such as this bar here it will, it will, it will make a vibration and I have this game. Game. invented in its one form by a Scottish physicist named David Brewster in 1816 this remarkable optical instrument truly lives up to its Greek name, an object, object for viewing beautiful forms. Have you ever knew that there was like a kaleidoscope inside this thing? No, no. Should we go inside? Yeah. As I said, the kaleidoscope has two, is made out of two or more mirrors and it works because of light and reflection. A sunbeam travels into the into the kaleidoscope in a straight line and then shines into all of these mirrors and and in those cartoons where the sunbeam shines on the magnifying glass and then you shine it on the uh, on the character's friend and then it hurts their eyes that's an example of a sunbeam in the kaleidoscope there's infinite symmetry and if you put like a bead or something inside this kaleidoscope, there's going to be like a little fragment, like like a glass, a glass broken, just cracked. Isn't there a fragment on the other side? Yeah, there is. Shall we look? 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 See, if you look at one mirror, you can see infinite pictures of yourself. Like if you see, if you, if you if you touch all the mirrors, you can see all of all of you touching the mirrors with. This is a gigantic keyboard in front of me. Children can have fun and learn the science behind it. The keyboard works because there's a bell underneath which I trigger when I press on it. Um, that makes sound vibrations, which is called sound waves, which goes through your ear canal and hit your eardrum. When the vibrations hit the eardrum, they pass onto the three smallest bones in your body called the ossicles. The ossicles consist of the stirrup, the anvil and the hammer. They cause the vibrations to pass onto a snail-shaped organ called the cochlea, which is filled with tiny microscopic hairs. As the vibrations pass, it shakes the hairs, causing the vibrations to pass onto the semicircular canals. After the process in the semicircular canals, the vibrations go into your nerve, which creates nerve signals, and go into your brain, and your brain then decodes what sound you're hearing. The amplitude is how loud or how quiet the sound is. The pitch is how high or how low the sound is. Siri's going to play Twinkle Twinkle Little Star. When, when the liquid is at rest, it lies perpendicular to the horizontal. When this spins, it creates a paraboloid. This is due to the centrifugal force. It directs from the centre outwards. The 
Archimedes called the mechanic screw, or the Archimedes screw. It shows the work of the mathematician Archimedes, who used a screw method to pump water up from rivers to water fields. This screw can be used in mountains to pump water up and down the mountain. Once this dish gets full, it will then tip over with a bit of weight, and then travel down here to be filtered, or can be used for another purpose. This is the vision tree. The vision tree also contains a microscope which you can see small objects clearly. The telescope lets you see things at a further distance. Now on to the periscope. The periscope lets you see from the bird's eye view of what's below. Eight mouthpieces are connected together to create four pairs of speaking tubes. You don't know which one your voice will come out of. Your sound vibrations travel through many different parts of your ear. When they get to your brain, they tell you the sound of what you They tell you what the sound was. The sound waves and molecules travel to the other side of the pipes and then it goes to the other person and the sound waves goes to the other person's brain telling them what the sound is. Just as Miles said, this is a demonstration that me and Miles will now do. Hello Cushy! Hello Miles, how are you? Good, I can hear you. Me too. That was a demonstration, me and Miles, testing if we can hear each other. Welcome to another part of the science corridor. This is called the Air Voices, and we are going to do a demonstration of its uses. These pumps have air inside, and when the handle is pushed up like this and pulled up, the air is also pulled up. And when the handle is pushed down, the air inside here is pushed down and bounces um, across the wall, um, the wall uh, to produce a sound. Frequency is how often the sound wave travels, and pitch is how high or low the note is. You can hear the sound because of the vibrations, which travel in sound waves straight into your ear. Now we are going to show you how it is used. 